This is the Becoming Muslim Podcast at UntoIslam.com, the show that helps people convert to Islam with hosts from the U.S., U.K., and Australia. My, my father was in the military. I grew up in a Cold War home. No exposure to Muslims. Then I moved here to central Pennsylvania, which is a very Christian conservative area. I go to a Catholic high school. Two years later, September 11th happens. And the world is faced with scary Muslims. <laughs> um, but the one thing that Catholics do is they take communion every week. And what the communion is, is you're supposed to believe that it is the body of Christ that you're taking, that you're accepting every week. It's, and I just, I always had this feeling like, there's something just not right about that. Like I couldn't mm-hmm. put my finger on it. Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but they were going to add Mary. And so it wasn't going to be the Trinity anymore. It was going to be four in one. I was like, how is this possible? How yeah. does God get more parts? And mm-hmm. I knew from that point on that I couldn't be Catholic anymore. And I just sat there and I was just like, "Uh uh-oh, what am I going to do? Which made the crying even harder. It just, it like, it tore me apart. It actually changed who I was inside. Because like, I used to really respect a lot of the rules. Before marriage and don't do this and uh, don't, you know, don't lie. And like, I really respect the rules. And I'm like, well, what is the point of all these rules? I'm going to hell anyway, because I don't believe the most fundamental rule, God. So like... All the rest of these rules really don't matter. I was like, yes, this is great. I'm finally gonna, you know. And he's a young guy. He's a very young, handsome man. I start talking to him. I find out that he's Muslim and he doesn't date. And I'm like, what do you mean you're Muslim and you don't date? He goes, I'm Muslim and I don't date. And then the woman standing next to me who was also in the, yeah, we're Muslim. And she, I said, you're a Muslim? She was wearing a t-shirt and caprice. I was like, what do you mean you're Muslim? She's like, I'm a Muslim. And my mind was just blown that day. Like, who are these Muslims? These are not. You know, no tur like they didn't wear turbans, they didn't have guns, you know? Like, wait a second, there's Muslims that aren't walking around, you know, screaming at the television. I had already said I can't become any other type of Christian because I can't reconcile their views on Jesus. I can't become Jewish because I still believe in Jesus. God, well then I turned to the page on Jesus in Islam. Jesus is a prophet, but he still had the miracle birth through Mary. For the last eight years. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That night I went to the masjid and I was like, is this true? Is this true? Is this really, really, really true? Yes, yes, yes. And they went into the whole story and the whole beautiful story about the prophet Isa and how important he was to the Muslims. And now even though Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the seal of the prophets, the respect that we have for Isa, Ibrahim, and Noah, and all the respect that we give to the prophets. And that's when I started to accept that like, okay, I don't need to be the perfect Muslim. I need to be the perfect Muslim for me. And for me, being the perfect Muslim is gaining that knowledge because that is all Allah has required us to do from the beginning is to gain knowledge. Definitely, if you listen to this podcast, listen to the other stories. They're really, really inspiring like i've been muslim 17 years and i was just like really moved by a lot of the stories they were just so beautiful mashallah
So I want everyone to welcome Sister Khadija. She's been Muslim for 17 years. She is from Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and she recalls how difficult it was to meet other converts and initially learn about Islam. And the biggest thing that you said you wanted people to know was that you can become Muslim. Even if there aren't a lot of people in the community, you can still grow in your deen. Is that right? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everyone listening is doing well. And I hope, inshallah, that they are finding blessings and barakah in their life today. And enjoy this podcast. Alhamdulillah. Yes, welcome, dear listener. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited. And if you have any questions, remember, there is our website, untoislam.com. And we have lots of information there. We have other stories from uh, different converts. So please feel free to explore. So let me ask my first question. It kind of goes on with what we were talking about a little bit, which is, was it, was it hard for you to convert to Islam? No. No, actually it wasn't. It was very, very easy. Um, so I had grown up Catholic. I had gone... I had done everything a good Catholic was supposed to do. I had gone to church every Sunday. My parents sent me to Catholic school. I even taught high school to Catholic students. I mean, to, to kids. I mm -hmm. had helped people with even becoming Catholic. Like, I loved going to church mm -hmm. because I have always truly believed in God. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing that Catholics do is they take communion every week. And what the communion is, is you're supposed to believe that it is the body of Christ that you're taking, that you're accepting every week. It's, and I just, I always had this feeling like there's something just not right about that. Like I couldn't mm -hmm. put my finger on it, but I was like, this, just, this isn't right. And then the other thing that Catholics really like to do is they like to pray to the saints. Mm -hmm. Like you have sure. St. Patrick. Or like one of the most famous ones, and you see it all the time, St. Jude, the mm -hmm. patron saint of lost causes. Yes, yes, I know St. Jude. Yeah. Like, so if you have like, if you're, if you have a struggle, you're supposed to pray to St. Jude. And I just could never do that. Mm -hmm. Like when I had troubles, I always turned to God. Mm -hmm. Sure. So Panala, I just like, I would go to church and I would actually cry mm -hmm. at church. People would be like, oh, look, she's pious. And I'd be like, no, I'm crying because I'm terrified I'm going to go to hell because I don't believe in any of this stuff. Sure, sure. Oh, wow. And this was even when I was when I was a young child. Sure, sure. Like, I remember being eight years old going, I want to go to Jerusalem. I want to go to Jerusalem so much. Mm -hmm. But then I would go to church and I'm like, why don't I believe these things? Why don't I believe these things? And I mean, it wasn't sure, every. Sure. But yeah. it was just this feeling I always had. Mm -hmm. So then in high school, I went to I went to a Catholic high school, and they they one of the things that you do when you're in Catholic high school is they have religion class, like it is sure. part of the curriculum. It's yeah. it's just your English class and your math class. And I remember sitting in my religion class, and they were teaching us about what happened after after Christ had died on the cross sure. and the history of the Catholic church. And slowly I became aware of all the changes they had made mm -hmm. uh, because first there was Jesus and he was Jewish mm -hmm. and they had the last supper and this is what they believe. Then sure. Paul. Sure. And, and Paul made all these changes. Like he made pork halal for the Christians and you no longer had to be circumcised and like different things change. And then there was Constantine mm -hmm. and with Constantine, they changed the dates of Christmas and Easter. Mm -hmm. So that the Romans would be, so that the Romans and the Greeks would be more comfortable. Sure. And sure. The council of Nicaea, which changed things even more. And also just at this particular time, while I was learning all of these things, there was a movement to make, Mary, mm -hmm. who we call Miriam in Islam, sure, sure. Member. So it wasn't just going to be God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but they were going to add Mary. They were going to add Mary. There was this movement, particularly during this time. This is when I was, 
a sophomore in high school, there was this, I was a, I was a junior in high school where they wanted to add Mary mm-hmm. as part of the Trinity. So it wasn't just going to be God, the father, Jesus, the son and the Holy spirit, but they were going to add Mary. And so it wasn't going to be the Trinity anymore. It was going to be four in one. Oh my and goodness. I was, I was like, how is this possible? How yeah. does God get more parts? And mm-hmm. I knew from that point on that I couldn't be Catholic anymore. Sure. Sure. Wow. But I, I didn't, often, didn't know about that. Yeah. Before, no, before. This, yeah. It wasn't a big movement. It passed mm-hmm. pretty quickly, mm-hmm. but just between learning about all those different councils where they changed the Catholic church. Mm-hmm. And then this final thing I was like, but I couldn't tell anyone. Sure. Of I course not. Household, and I went to Catholic school and I loved my, and I loved my community. Mm-hmm. And I just sat there and I was just like, uh oh, what am I going to do? Which made the crying even harder. Like, yeah, when I would of course. Hear. It just, it like, it tore me apart. Mm-hmm. And it actually, it actually changed who I was inside. Wow. Like, because like I used to really respect a lot of the rules, like, sure. don't have time before marriage and don't do this and uh, don't, you know, don't lie. And like, I really respect the rules. And I'm like, well, what is the point of all these rules? Because I'm sure. like, I'm going. I'm going to hell anyway, because I don't believe the most fundamental rule. Sure, sure. God, so like all the rest of these rules really don't matter. Mm -hmm. So I find it, it wasn't that it became super rebellious, because I still knew like you had to be a decent human being, but I kind of, I actually let a lot of other things slide. So I just Mm -hmm. kind of fell into normal teenage, you know, like what a lot of people like, I just, I just left my conservative attitudes behind after that. And I was like, okay, well then I guess dating is fine and smoking is fine. And all that other thing is fine. So I, and and listening to rap music, because I was always told rap music was like the devil too. just, and and you know, and it, it, what, like I said, I didn't become some crazy teenager. I didn't go to jail or anything. Mm -hmm. I just, I just was like, well, all of these rules are kind of silly. Sure. Sure. But also I started searching. Mm -hmm. I started picking up books. I started, first thing I started to do was look at other Christian religions. Mm -hmm. Um, I started looking at other Christian religions. Well, then we got a part in my Catholic education where we talked about the other religions. So we learned about the Jewish faith. We didn't learn about any of the polytheists. Sure. Okay. But we learned about the Jewish faith and we learned about the Muslim faith. And the Jewish faith, we learned, well, they don't accept Jesus at all. That's pretty much how we were taught. They don't accept sure. Jesus at all. And there was a very popular radio talk show host called Dr. Laura Schlesinger. Oh, yeah, I've heard and of her. And we had to read one of her books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had to read one of her books because they were on morality mm-hmm. and we had to write a book report. Mm-hmm. Which wasn't so bad, but so that was how we learned about Judaism. Sure. And for the Muslim faith, we were shown, we were told that they rejected Jesus and that they believed in a different God. And, oh, and here's this movie called Not Without My Daughter. Mm -hmm. And the movie is, for anyone that doesn't know, it's this movie from, I believe, the late 80s, early 90s. Yes, about yes. Starring Sally Field, mm-hmm. where she's married to an Iranian man in America, and he decides to take her overseas to meet his family in mm-hmm. Iran. Mm-hmm. And once they get here, there, her husband decides he wants to stay there, and she doesn't want to. Mm-hmm. So he takes her passport away. Sure. And he starts to physically abuse her, and he tells her she can't leave without without she's he tells her if she wants to leave she has to leave her daughter there yeah sure basically like kidnaps her and says that she needs to become a muslim woman mm-hmm. and that is what her life's going to be and then she eventually escapes and heroes that like allowed her to escape but do you know the movie do you know in real life because that's a based on a true story she actually did become muslim like oh, she no. converted to islam yeah, she actually in real life converted to Islam. Even after she left, she was still Muslim. 
Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, I never. Yeah, I read the I read the book. And so, of course, they leave out some of the things in the movie. But she actually did convert to Islam. Well, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, well, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So, well, it's, it's yeah, that's beautiful. I will have to read the book now because I just remember that movie, and I was like, oh, okay, well, why would anyone want to be Muslim? Because if a, being Muslim means that you have to like wear this horrible black thing, and your husband's going to beat you, mm-hmm, who's going to mm-hmm. be a Muslim? Yeah, that, yeah. That was the takeaway. And I had no other context. Sure, like, you had no context. Exactly. I, I, I live, my, my father was in the military. I grew up in a Cold War home. Mm-hmm. No exposure to Muslims. Sure. Then I moved here to central Pennsylvania, which is a very Christian conservative area. Sure. I go to a Catholic high school. Mm-hmm. I graduated in 1998. Mm -hmm. years later September 11th happens oh wow yeah and the world is faced with scary Muslims Mm -hmm. and we're being told that people who have retired from the army are going to have to go back into the army to go fight the terrorists wow yeah and that's and that's that's what we're told Mm -hmm. and you know, my father had already given 23 years of service mm-hmm. and we're being told like he might have to go back into the army again mm-hmm. because of the war on terror. And that's sure. all you all the time mm-hmm. on the news constantly. Sure. And again, like I said, I live in a very conservative Christian area. Mm-hmm. There were no Muslims around me to to explain otherwise. Yeah, yeah. So it was just, it was like, okay. And I mean, the the words that were used to explain Muslims were all the ones, all the negative ones that you hear, you know, towel heads. Sand. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I've heard those words yeah, from other term- people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And granted, I have never been someone to participate in slurs. Sure. But I was like, Yep, that's what a Muslim is. And the, actually, the way I really felt about it was a way that a lot of the women around me felt about it was, why would anyone join a, a religion where women have no rights? Because sure, that's sure. It, sure, that's how it was presented to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, women have no rights. Mm-hmm. They have exactly what their husbands tell them to do. Mm-hmm. They cover from head to toe. And that's it. Yeah, sure. That's what I was told. Yeah. And I went, I went all this. So here I am. Brings me to 2004. Here sure. I am. I'm going around. I actually met this really nice Jordanian man. Oh, actually sure. Is not, he grew up Muslim. He's not practicing Muslim at all. Okay. But we start hanging out. Like he actually becomes my shopping buddy. Mm-hmm. Like we hang out all the time. Mm-hmm. I get a job at a warehouse. Sure. And this is a hilarious story, actually. This, um, there's also this other guy who, like, I'm working with these wonderful people from Bosnia. And as, as, actually, at this warehouse, there's the nice thing about this warehouse is it's very international. They have meetings in English and Spanish and Bosnian and uh, Urdu and, like, they hire anyone that speaks any language. So there's like an international community at this warehouse. It's a very welcoming kind of place. So it was really nice. I really enjoyed working there because it, it made me feel it made me feel less white, which I know is a really strange thing to say. But when you grow up in an army household, you know, you're always surrounded by different types of people. And I, I felt very comfortable there to finally be surrounded by different types of people again. So I'm working there and I have a station that's right by the front door of the warehouse. And every day at the same time, a man walks by me on his way out to take his break. And then he comes back 15 minutes later and he is very attractive. And I'm like, oh, and it was like the best like time of my day. Like I looked forward to it. I like watched the clock. Oh, here comes. I didn't know his name. I didn't know. Oh my goodness. Alhamdulillah. (laughs) you know, I'm a, tw- I'm a 20, I think I was 23 at the time. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a 23 year old. And I'm just like, oh, 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 well, I got transferred back to his department. Ooh. And I was really excited. 
I was like, yes, this is great. I'm finally going to, you know, and he's a young guy. He's a very young, handsome man. I start talking to him. I find out that he's Muslim and he doesn't date. And I'm like, oh, what do you mean you're Muslim and you don't date? He goes, I'm Muslim and I don't date. And then the woman standing next to me, who was also in the, yeah, we're Muslim. And she, I said, you're Muslim? She was wearing a t-shirt and capris. I was like, what do you mean you're Muslim? She's like, I'm a Muslim. She was from Bosnia. Like, and a lot of Bosnian women don't wear the typical clothes that people associate with Muslim women. They, a lot of them don't wear hijab. A lot of them don't wear the long skirts. They dress just like any other white woman. They wear t-shirts and capris. And I was like, no way. And my mind was just blown that day. Like, who are these Muslims? Like, these are not, you know, no tur like they didn't wear turbans. They didn't have like their they didn't have guns. You know, like, wait a second, there's Muslims that aren't walking around, you know, screaming at the television. Like, I just was kind of like, so I go to my Jordanian friend and I'm like, I start asking him like a thousand questions. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. What do you mean? Like, and he just looks at me. He goes, I haven't been to a mosque in 10 years. I can't answer a single one of your questions. And I said, well, who can, who can, who can? And he says, I have this friend, JJ. He goes to the mosque every day. I'll introduce you to him. So, okay. He takes me and introduces me to, his name is actually Jihad, but he, he takes me to introduce to, to JJ. And JJ says, yes, the masjid is here. And I said, there's a masjid in Carlisle? Like, I'm just like, Flabbergasted. <laughs> wow, that's fascinating. Muslims in Carla? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Walking around in my town? Like, oh you... no. <laughs> no, I'm just like, what do you mean there's Muslims walking around? Okay, this is this is just insane. So I go to the masjid, and at the time, this masjid had only been built the year previously. And alhamdulillah. It was very small. And everyone that met there, they would just sit and they would just chat. Like they would make their salah, which, which I found out was the, like, I didn't know what that was either, which was their prayer. And then after their prayer, they would sit and they would talk for a few minutes. So Jay, now at the time, I didn't know men and women weren't supposed to be together or whatever, but JJ drove me over there. Jihad drove me over there and we're, he introduced me to the, there were two women there. And like five men. And that's very sat. small. That is very small. Alhamdulillah. And I had on like jeans and a shirt. I think I had a short sleeve shirt on and I had to put on like my jacket, even though it was like 80 degrees outside to cover my arms. And I had like a, like a makeshift scarf on just to be respectful. They're like, yeah, this is to be respectful. Like, because the masjid does ask that you cover your hair because all the men and women are like in the same room. There was no like separation. It's not big enough. It was just like one room. It wasn't big enough for men and women to be separate. Sure, sure. I've been in a masjid like that and the women just stand yeah. behind the men. I kind of like that, to be honest. Yeah, I do too. I'm, I really I'm do like that. it. That's how I became. And they just, but it, they were really welcoming. It wasn't like, oh, we can't look at you. It was just like, this is our masjid. This is the etiquette of the masjid, which I totally get because I've been going to Catholic church for so long. You don't show up at Catholic church in a tank top and booty shorts, you know? So I totally got it. I was like, I can't follow the rules. And I just started asking them questions. And mm -hmm. they sat there with me for hours. just in And then Jay and I... Jihad and I got to know each other because we had children the same age. I had at sure. that point I had a four-year-old and a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. He had a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. So we started hanging out at the park together. Oh, okay. Like we, would hang out, we would get our, yeah, we would get we would go to the park and our kids would play together. And he and I would talk more about Islam. And then finally I said, you know, is there a book I should be reading? Like I didn't know. I knew there was a Quran. I knew there was a Quran, but to me, it was this book in Arabic. I didn't know anything about mm -hmm. the English. Mm -hmm. I just knew. Sure, sure. And he 
actually purchased me this book, and I really, really recommend this book to Sure, anyone. what's the book? About It's called What Everybody Knows to Need About Islam, and it's by John Esposito. Okay, actually, that's a good idea. That's yeah. A- because for a lot of people, the Quran, even in the English translation, can be a little intimidating. Mm-hmm. Sure. Not not that the Quran is not the most beautiful book, and I do suggest that every Muslim reads it. Yes, of course. But it doesn't answer every question, like, what is a woman's place in Islam? And this book is very simple. It's, mm-hmm. here's the question, here's the answer. Here's the question, here's the answer. And it's from an American's perspective. Sure. Or it's from a Westerner's perspective. Okay. I think it's even from someone coming at it, like, from England or Australia. Anyone that's mm-hmm. Western sure. comes at it from a Western perspective. So I highly recommend this book for anyone that is thinking about becoming Muslim and needs answers to a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. Because you also don't have to read it cover to cover. You can just flip to, like, I have a question. Here's the answer to the question. Yeah, sure. And it answers it very simply. And I remember finally saying, okay, so what do Muslims say about Jesus? Because at this sure. point, I had already said, I can't become any other type of Christian because I can't reconcile their views on Jesus. I can't become Jewish because I still believe in Jesus, even though yes. I don't believe in God. Well, then I turned to the page on Jesus in Islam. Mm-hmm. And he said, Jesus is a prophet, but he still had the miracle birth through Mary. Yeah, and yeah. Oh, <gasps> <laughs> this is for the last eight years. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Oh Alhamdulillah, my gosh. alhamdulillah. Well, at that point, I didn't know a humdullah. I know, but I'm but just I'm, saying it. I was just like, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah, so yeah. I, that night, I went to the masjid, and I was like, is this true? Is this true? Is this really, really, really true? Mm-hmm. Like, yes, yes, yes. And they went into the whole story, and the whole beautiful story about the Prophet Isa, and how important he was to the Muslims. And how even though Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the seal of the prophets, the respect that we have for Isa, Ibrahim, and Noah, and all the respect that we give to the prophet. Like, they're men. They are just men, but they are the most important men. And we find our guidance and our way of life through following them because they were inspired by God. But not only these men, but also through Miriam, the mother of Isa, and Khadija, the wife of the prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and their examples. And that was when I was like, I don't know how else to say I was sold at that moment. I was like, this is it. Like, I don't even, I didn't even need to read the Quran at that point. I was like, I'm a Muslim. Uh, That's amazing. And this was, this was a couple, a few days before Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So I said to them, I said, oh, oh my gosh, this is it. This is what I've been looking for. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. So then they're like, well, then become Muslim. And I'm yeah. like, well, how do I? I was like, how do I do that? And they're like, oh, you just take Shahada. I'm like, what do you mean you just take Shahada? Like, I came from Catholicism. When you want to become a Catholic, it takes two years. It, it takes, two- yeah, I got to do the nine month RCIA class. I became, <laughs> I converted from, I was Protestant and I became Catholic. And so, yeah, I took like, it wasn't an immediate yeah. thing. <laughs> no, it's right. like this whole process. Like, you mm-hmm. have to go to church for a year, then you have to go to classes for another year, and then you have to wait for. Easter because you don't yeah. become Catholic like the night before Easter. Easter vigil, yeah. yeah. The Easter vigil, like you have to wait for a specific day. Like you, can't you have to have a sponsor. Don't forget your sponsor. You have to have a sponsor, yeah. And that's what I was used to because that's how I grew up. Sure. So I'm like, okay, so what's this process like? How do I sign up? Where's the classes? Yeah, and yeah. They're like, they're like, no, you just take shahada, and I'm like, what's shahada? And they're like, La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's it. And they're like, that's it. And I went, what? It's so easy. <laughs> no way. And I'm like, I need to think about this for a minute. And then I came back and they're like, well, don't think about it too long because you don't want to like not become Muslim. If you don't become Muslim, you could die and go to uh, like, and then you won't go to, you won't. The only thing that really scared me. And I wish I had taken this more into consideration. It wasn't that I didn't want to become Muslim. I wish 
I had taken a little bit more time to learn about the commitment that I was getting into my getting into. Mm -hmm. I had taken just a little bit more time to learn how to make salah. Sure, sure. A little bit more time to understand like what fasting and everything meant. Uh, before I took my shahada, um, but the one thing they did say to me, and I do say this to other sisters too, I'm like, it is a balancing act. I know a lot of people always say, I want to make sure I'm doing things right before I become Muslim. I want to make sure I'm doing things right before I become Muslim. Whereas they were like, no, you can take your shahada and you will go to Jannah. Like once you take your shahada, you are a believer, you will go like, Allah will welcome you into the ummah, even if you don't pray, even if you don't do everything else. Mm -hmm. and that's why I took my shahada before I learned anything else. Sure, sure. I didn't, I don't think I knew any other, like, I don't think I knew any other, um, I knew like Khadija, Fatima, Aisha, I knew mm -hmm. Muhammad, I didn't know any of the Arabic words. For sure, any sure, sure. It's nothing. I just said, okay. I didn't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. Allah Akbar. Like that was it. That was like, yeah, sure, sure. my Islamic knowledge. I said, okay. Um, and I said, well, Jenna sounds really good. So I took my Shahada and I took it the day before Ramadan in wow. 2000. Wow. And the next day I started fasting. I know. I was like, that you just jump in with both feet. Oh, it was really rough. Yeah, I can imagine. Very, very rough. Mm -hmm. It is. It was very hard to jump into the deep end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's been a lot of ups and downs. Sure, sure. And I used to beat myself up about it because it was. I, I, I know a lot of sisters walk in and they're ready to cover and they're ready to pray. Mm -hmm. And I did. I used to beat myself up a lot about it until someone finally said, and this is the thing that really got me through it and what gets me through it now, even now, because um, listeners, something that you don't know is Gina and I actually know each other from our Quran class. Yeah, QuranRevolution.com. Revolution.com. Yeah, all the way. <laughs> Gina, mashallah, has been Muslim for 17 months and she's doing beautifully. She's reading Quran. I've been Muslim 17 years. And I am just starting to read Quran. Alhamdulillah that you are. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. You this can do it. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And it's been a wonderful, life-changing experience. But this is something I've struggled with for a long time. But the reason why I don't beat myself up about it anymore is because a sister sat down and said, you know, even when, when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, became Muslim, and Khadijah became Muslim, and Ali, and Abu Bakr, you know, Islam didn't come to them in one day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It came to them in 23 years. Yes, they were exactly. Perfect. They were not perfect Muslims mm -hmm. the day Jibril came down and said, Ikara. So yeah, so our dear listeners, they need to be aware of the fact that this is something that, that takes time and it's something that you grow and you continue to grow with and you continue to learn over a lifetime. It isn't like you take your Shahada and all of a sudden you can speak Arabic and you know every Hadith and or are expected to or any of that you, you're learning and even people who are born muslim are still learning and if you exactly. think about it all of the initial sahaba were all reverts exactly and that's when i started to accept that like okay i don't need to be the perfect muslim i need to be the perfect muslim for me and for me being the perfect muslim is gaining that knowledge because that is all Allah has required us to do from the beginning is to gain knowledge about our deen. And once you start to gain that knowledge, that's when you can implement things and start to work towards the things that you think you should accomplish as a Muslim. Like yeah, learning. Yeah, that makes sense. Like learning how to pray. It's a process. Mm -hmm. Like I, we were talking previously before this started, when I became Muslim, there was no social media. There was no sure. YouTube. It took me two years to meet another Muslim convert. I learned how to pray from a VHS tape. Wow, a VHS tape. That's really VHS dating you. Tape. It was an old VHS tape. And I, I used was, YouTube. I have to be so glad I have YouTube. <laughs> oh my the, same, okay, the same video that taught me how to pray is on YouTube now. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. 
quality videos out there now <laughs> that I recommend over that one. But mm -hmm. I used to put the VHS tape into the VCR and that's how I would pray. Wow. For the longest time. And I didn't know the air, everything was phonetic. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know the word mustakeen? Yes, mustakeen. For the longest time it was Philistine. No. Oh, oh no. Because we I didn't know what it meant. I thought we were praying to Palestine. I oh, was no. like, <laughs> no one to explain it. Like, probably for the first three Philistine. years. I could see that. <laughs> yeah. For the first three years, uh, I was Muslim because I had no clue what any of the words meant. And there was no one to explain it to me. There yes. No yes. That, that's though, it's interesting. Yeah. I just, I was just making the sounds. Yes, yes, you're just trying. You're trying your best, and and yeah. even with the YouTube, I would just play the YouTube video and pray along with it because I just didn't know uh, yeah. have everything memorized. I still don't have it a hundred percent memorized, but I kind of kind of have it, kind of sort of. I'm still learning, like I said. Yeah, but inshallah, like you, like you said, inshallah. it's it's the effort you put into it, and that is the thing that I learned is the effort you put into it. Mm -hmm. That is what love rewards. Yes. Love rewards your effort. So mm -hmm. much more, and your intention. Your intention, which I thought that was interesting. Your so. intention, listeners. Like this is the most important thing. Like this is the th reason why I agreed to do this interview because I've listened to several of these these podcasts now since Gina's introduced me. The thing that I really want to tell new people, especially listening to these brothers and sisters telling their stories, is mm -hmm. you get so much reward from your intention. Mm -hmm. just from your intention i mean the follow through and then you get double the reward once you follow through yes you know, love loves the thing that you do consistently mm -hmm. more than he loves the thing you do once yeah that's big small consistent deeds you're right so that's, even, if you, mm -hmm. even if you take your shahada let's say you take your shahada and you're like oh i can't wear hijab yet or oh i don't know if i can pray yet or oh I don't know if I can fast yet or, oh, or if you think of the 20,000 things you can't do that a Muslim is supposed to do, don't think of the 20,000 things you can't do. Think of the one thing you can do today. Yes. Yes. Just one little step. Just do it tomorrow and then do mm -hmm. it the next day and mm -hmm. do it the next day mm -hmm. and then do it the next day and keep doing it. And then until you say, Hey, I got this. Exactly. Exactly. Then one add, little thing at a time. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And then, and then add the next thing, like even saying Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Add alhamdulillah or inshallah. Like I think the first thing I actually learned to do consistently was say inshallah. Inshallah, was yeah, it. yeah. I had a friend who was Muslim and that's the first thing she taught me to say was inshallah, inshallah. And so I said that a lot. Even when I wasn't Muslim, I would say inshallah. Oh. Well, <laughs> because before I was Muslim, I said God willing all the time. Yeah, that's like, what you would God say, willing, yeah. God willing. I was never a believer in luck. I never did good luck charms. I never did any of the superstitious things. I always sure. said God willing. If I wanted something to happen, I said God willing. God willing, yeah. Heard the masjid said, oh, we say God willing, but we say inshallah. Yes, yes. So, oh, okay, inshallah. Inshallah. And I, I remember that being the first thing I was able to do consistently. If I wanted something to happen, I would say inshallah. Inshallah, yeah. Now, and now... The more and more I learn about inshallah, the more and more I take it more and more seriously. Mm -hmm. And then I learned about it and I really implemented it into my life. Sure, like I sure. know now where it comes from. I know that it's from Surah Kaf that, and why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given that revelation. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do. You just take your time and you gain the knowledge. And then the other thing that I really want to suggest to all of your listeners is sure. build your Islamic library. YouTube is great. The internet is great. Social mm -hmm. media is great. But Sheikh Google is exactly that. He's Sheikh Google and he's not a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Uncle Google. <laughs> he's not. He's TikTok, not. TikTok is not a Muslim. YouTube no. is not a Muslim. No. <laughs> In fact, so many times I've turned on a YouTube video to listen to an Islamic lecture and the ad before it is a beer commercial and i'm like oh my god i haven't really? touched a beer oh yeah and i report <laughs> it every time like, like hello why are you playing a beer commercial before like 
Asura. Like this is ridiculous. Like read the like Google. Come on, you have. You most- really think it's gonna work selling beer like that? I don't think yeah. it's gonna work so well. You have the most advanced algorithm in the world, and you don't know not to show a beer commercial before. So I report it every time. Sure, sure. Like, why is this? You know, why are you reporting this? And I'm like, it's inappropriate. Yeah. Like, I see your Bacardi commercial or your beer or Bacardi commercial before I'm going to listen to Quran. That's yeah, exactly. Why. Subhanallah. <laughs> distractions are there. Yeah. Or yeah. like a lot of these Muslim websites and Alhamdulillah, I know that I know they need to have ads to support their, their website so that they can continue to run their websites. But a lot of these ads, they're distracting. They draw you away from the research that you're trying to do online. Sure, sure. Oh, and and a lot of these news, these these chat boxes, I know that these brothers and sisters have the best intentions when they give advice. But like one of the signs, one of the signs of of the day of judgment, one of the signs of the end days is with is when people without knowledge are presenting themselves as people with knowledge. So one thing I really try to do, I like I've I know I've been Muslim 17 years. I have gained a lot of knowledge. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. A long, long time and a lot of hard work. But I know A, my Arabic is terrible mm-hmm. because I've never been able to foster it. I've never had a really good teacher. I've but never, it's getting better, inshallah. Inshallah. We have a good teacher, alhamdulillah. Well, now we do, and uh, you know, a lot of grand granted us the internet and has made it possible. Um, but the other thing is, you know, even with 17 years of like being a Muslim, like I, I don't sit in a library and study Islam every day. Like mm-hmm. It is not my career. I have four children. Mm-hmm. I have a husband. I have cats. Mm-hmm. I've had jobs like, you know, subhanAllah because of COVID, I, I had to take time off of work but before COVID, sure. I had I was a full-time pharmacy tech for several years sure I I go to college I'm I'm a junior in at Penn State right now studying mm-hmm. economics you know I have so many other things going on in my life I don't have the time to be a full-time scholar but there has through the years through generations and generations and generations there have been sheikhs and sheikahs who are full-time scholars and yes yes time and curate a library with books written by those full-time scholars sure Even sure you read one page a day from those books mm-hmm, find mm-hmm. Books reliable sources yes and read those books because the distraction first of all you will not have the distraction from the media yes like the media just will not distract you just take a quiet time find five minutes ten minutes whatever time you're able to dedicate and read from your Islamic library. Yes. Even yes. if you start out with Islamic fiction mm-hmm. or, or an Islamic biography, like you were talking about that that book that you read, um, the Not Without My Daughter, and sure. how she became Muslim afterwards. That's a great book to start out with. If you're interested in biography, mm-hmm. there's a good start. Because usually books like that will give references to other great books that you can read. Sure, sure. Or um, if you know someone, if you know someone and you really love them and you respect them, ask them some great books that you could read. Sure. So what book would you recommend? What would be one I, book? I, I will absolutely tell you, um, if you go to the Dara Salam mm-hmm. yeah. website, basically every book on there. Every book on there? All right. <laughs> Not one just the- didn't every book, but is there any one that you would start with? Yes, actually, I would. If you're if you're a female, I would start with the ideal Muslim, mm-hmm. the ideal Muslima. Mm-hmm. If you're a man, I would start with uh, the ideal Muslim. Mm-hmm. And then when you're done, I would switch and read the other one so that you know what your spouse is supposed your spouse or the opposite sex is supposed to be doing. Sure, sure. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. That's very useful to know. That's very yeah, useful. It goes over the basics, it, uh, and then from there you can build on that because it, it goes over the pill. The thing I really like about these books, um, mm-hmm. they go over the uh, pillars of Islam, mm-hmm. and they go over the pillars of 
They go over the pillars of Islam and then they go over the pillars of Iman. Do you know sure, what those sure. are? Six. The, yeah, the six pillars, the six, there's five and then there's six. Yeah. Everyone yes. know everyone knows about the five pillars of Islam, the prayer, I mean the Shahada, the prayer, sure, the sure. Ramadan, the Kat, and Hajj. Yes. But like I know for me, when I learned about the six pillars of Iman, you know, four years after I became Muslim, I was like, what are these six? You know, and they're they're the things that you are supposed to believe in. Yes, yes, the six beliefs. And I learned them like when I took my shahada. Uh, mm-hmm. The person I took my shahada with, he explained to me the five pillars of Islam, and then he explained to me the six, um, the six things that we believe in, and so that was well, very useful. I got him a little bit confused at first, but I eventually figured it out. <laughs> when I became Muslim, you know, Alhamdulillah, they did tell me, you know, what all of these things were. You know, they did tell me about Qadr, you know, predestination, they yes, told me the, and the jinn and everything. They just didn't explain it in the yeah. six. Iman. So it wasn't that these were brand new concepts. I just didn't know they were organized in that way. Yeah, yeah, nice, yeah, sure. Nice to have them organized in that way. And that's the nice thing. Organize them in this way. But they also tell you, you know, being a Muslima is more than your duty to your spouse. It's also your duty to the community, your duty to your neighbors, your duty mm-hmm. to your parents, your duties to your children. Sure. That's what I really like about these books. It just, it, it lays out in less than 400 pages your duties yeah i have like, to read that one i haven't read that one i read the new muslims field guide and then becoming good. muslim i think is the other one or being muslim i think is the other one so but yeah, yeah. we have a whole list on our website of a variety of books that we would recommend so. i know i was very excited i went on your website and i'm like new books to read <laughs> yay <laughs> never heard feel free to leave a comment of books that you recommend so we can also add them to our list Oh, inshallah. But yeah, I, inshallah. I highly recommend the ideal Muslima and the ideal Muslim. And there's actually um, complimenting websites and Facebook mm-hmm. groups that go with them. Again, mm-hmm. whenever you go on any website or social media, you know, you do have to be careful because a lot of people speak out of turn. Mm-hmm. And also when you take knowledge, and this is something I've learned, and it really took me a long time, even from respected sheikhs, or sure. imam you see on tv like you will see someone and they're very very knowledgeable mm-hmm. but if they don't give you the source mm-hmm. of their knowledge mm-hmm. it's not from the quran and it's not from the sunnah like if they say don't do this mm-hmm. that's the end of the statement mm-hmm. like i would question that a little bit and say well sure. why are they saying don't do that but yeah. if they say don't eat pork because in this surah, Allah says, don't eat the flesh of the swine. Well, then, no, don't eat the pork. Sure. Like, that simple. Allah says, don't eat the pork. But if they say, trying to don't eat it. salt because it's not halal. They're just giving you random. Uh, oh, uh, someone, I, I heard a shake say, don't drink Coca-Cola. Don't drink Coca-Cola. Why not? Yeah. Well, he said, oh, because it's not good for you. Which is true. Like True. And, I mean, it's not good for you. and uh, But... It's not haram. Based, it's not haram, and that's based on his opinion. Yeah. Yes, yeah, an so, opinion. Yes, and that's the other thing. Like, it's really hard. And also, and I'm going to tell you this, because I love all of my sisters in Islam. Like, my sisters in Islam have become closer to me than my sisters in real life. Mm-hmm. Not that I don't love my sisters in real life. But when you have that love for each other for the sake of Allah, that is a bond that mm-hmm. is amazing like i don't know if you've experienced that yet in your 17 months but i mean have you met the sisters oh my goodness yes immediately like everyone hugged me as soon as i took and i took i took my shahada twice i took it once um with my doctor because you probably heard my story and and then i took it again with um at the masjid yeah so so it's yeah building it's it, like ugh, fulfilling feeling to have that sense of just people that have your back and they don't have your back because they're related to you or they have some obligation to you. They have Mm -hmm. your back because they know that's what Allah wants them to do. Yes. 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 And that is just a relationship you can't beat Mm -hmm. like for anything. But there's like, there's curves that come up and down when you, when, when you become like, we all go through our curves as Muslim 
convert. Slash yeah, you know, I guess imam fluctuates is what I've heard. You know, imam sort of like fluctuates and things you'll fluctuate. Go through, you'll go through a period like if you put your hijab on, you'll go through a period where you're like, why am I wearing this hijab? Do I really need to wear this hijab? Like you'll question your hijab choice. And some sure. sisters, off, some sisters don't, but there's always this period like, is this really, really necessary? And I'll tell you, like I put, it took me four years to put on my hijab. Mm -hmm. And even there was still a year period where I took it off. Sure. After I had put it on. Yeah. There was a year. It seems where like it can be like that. Like it's, it's a struggle sometimes. Yeah. But I, I, I came yeah. to the realization with myself that mm -hmm. like I cannot present myself. I'm a white woman. I, mm -hmm. but I wasn't wearing because when I put it on, I put it on because everyone was telling me I had to. Sure. I came to the realization that I needed to wear it because I don't feel like I can present myself as a Muslim without it on. Yeah, sure. So I have to do this for myself. I cannot do this because it's the expectation. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. We usually fight things that we have to do. I mean, for me, I did it because, you know, this is what God wants me to do. And since God wants me to do it, I want to do it because he loves me. And I'm yeah. just grateful. And, yeah. And when I put it on, it was like peer pressure. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I understood that this is what Allah wants that I sure. put it on for myself. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, and a lot of sisters go through that. So, I think so. And they kind of go back and forth because there's a lot of information out there where people are like, no, you don't have to wear it. Exactly. You know, they don't really want, there's a video that I watched, you know, my first week of being a Muslim. Cause I didn't wear it for the first week. And I said to my friend, uh, her name was Afros. So I said, why did you give me all these scars? Am I supposed to be wearing them? <laughs> She's like, yes, you're supposed to be wearing them. And, I, and then I shared her the video and she shared me another with me another video. And then I realized I really did want to wear the hijab because my friend who was Muslim who, in college, I had always wanted to wear the hijab. And she said, oh, you have to be Muslim to wear the hijab. And I finally realized, well, I'm Muslim, so I can wear the hijab now. <laughs> well, that's you, you don't have to be Muslim to wear the hijab. I have a friend who has... No, you, you don't have to be, but she was trying to get me to convert, to yeah. be honest. She just not was trying to... Shahada was not taking her shahada yet, and she wears hijab all the time. Sure, sure. Like, all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. It's hilarious to me. Like, she's been... She's been a wonderful companion for years, and I don't know why she doesn't take shahada, but she just doesn't take shahada. And she knows more about Islam than most Muslims. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And inshallah, when it's when she's inshallah, ready. Yeah, that's what I always say. Inshallah, one day she'll be Muslim. Yeah. Okay. Um. So sorry, my my daughter is my child is leaving to um go. No, it's daughter. okay. There's I don't know if you've heard the children in the background here. We have children. There's lots yeah. of children here. <laughs> and then, and then the other thing that goes on the flip side of that is also be sensitive to those that are struggling because the other thing that reverts slash converts go through is they go through a haram. I've said this a couple of times. They go through a haram police stage. Yes. They start to get a little bit of knowledge. And it's a, it, 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 once you start learning beyond the basics, you get a little bit of knowledge. And then all of a sudden you're like a shaka or you think oh, you're a shaka. You can't do that. That's haram. Yeah. You can't do that. That's haram too. Haram. Haram. Don't do that. Like you can't go to the beach or you can't do this or you can't do that. And like, and, and you're just, <laughs> and, and you're I'm a little like, too far. I did it too. Like I'm sure I did it too. We all have those moments. There was like a two year period where like, I wouldn't let anyone play mu mu music around me. Like don't play that haram music. Around me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, oh. I love reward those who are patient. I mean, I mean, I mean. But in the same respect, as your sister in Islam, have patience with those people. You know, ride those waves. You know, sure, sure. I figured they know what they're doing and to let yeah. them come in their own t place and time. Like I was, I saw a sister who came to the masjid and she, she was, uh, it was during Ramadan. She came in, she was dressed to the nines. She looked beautiful. She didn't have a head, hijab on. She was wearing high heels and her outfit. I mean, it was just very nice. She looked very beautiful. Um, and I thought to myself, well, she probably has, you know, something in her bag with that's with her. And she probably knows what she's doing. This is an adult. Mm -hmm. So I just said to her, you know, eat, you know, happy Ramadan, Eid Mubarak. Mm -hmm. And, and just didn't say anything because I didn't feel like I needed to, because I just felt like she's an adult. 
and she knows what she's doing. She knows that she has to, when she's going to say her prayer, she has to wear a scarf. I'm pretty sure she knows this. This woman looks like she was born Muslim. So as she was walking past me after I took her temperature, one of the brothers, because we had two stations, I was taking temperatures with the sister side and he was taking temperatures with the brother side. And he saw her. And of course, he had to say something. He yelled at her, where's your hijab? She goes, I have it in the bag. And I was just like, I wanted to yell back at him. Why aren't you lowering your gaze? Yeah. Brother. Oh, yeah. And also, you know, sisters, be patient with these brothers. Oh, my like, God. It's really, you shouldn't be asking, in my opinion. This is just my opinion. They shouldn't be asking. shouldn't be looking even. That yeah, as a, as a woman, and, and the other, oh, and oh my gosh, that's another piece of advice that if I can give anyone, like when you convert, like you have to understand, Islam is perfect. People are not. People are not perfect. You're, that is so true. I am not perfect. I admit it. I'm not perfect. People make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, even the only perfect, per, you know, the only perfect people were our prophets. Mm -hmm. You know, Allah reward them, and even then. They made mistakes, and their mistakes were there to teach us. Yes. So Alhamdulillah. We fall, Alhamdulillah. When we fall and we make our mistakes, we just need to say, Allah, forgive us. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Allah, may Allah, forgive us. Yes. And we need to turn to the stories of the prophets, and we need to learn from them. Mm -hmm. And I, I know, like, I know I've had discussions with sisters who have made a big deal about little things that mm -hmm. another sister has done and you have to say to yourself listen you know this was not a major sin but judging that person is yes. a major sin. yes this because is true pride in islam after rejecting allah is the biggest sin you can commit in islam sure and you need to remember that that's not saying you can't love the way that you look you can't dress beautifully. Sure, why not? You can. Life. But when you use that to look down on someone else, mm, so when you go further, if you have to remember that we are all we are all below Allah. Yes, yes, yes. And alhamdulillah, you know, it's it's you know, dear listeners, just just think about it. It's not a contest. We're not competing against each other, you know. In my point of view, it, it's not a competitive sport. It's a, it's a team sport. Exactly. We're here together as a team to lift each other up so that we can all reach that goal of Jenna together. Not it's that this person gets it and this person doesn't get it. Exactly. It's called the Ummah. We all want to go there together. Yeah, we want we to do it together. Want, yeah, we all want to be in the shade. Exactly. All of us. Gonna, and the shade's going to be big enough for all of us. A lot of people. Well, he's gonna. If the shade's gonna be big enough for all of us. There's no one that's gonna be standing outside of the shade, you know, unless there's a really good reason. Allah's not gonna be like, oh yeah. It's not gonna be like when you're at line to go. He's not gonna be like, oh, you have the Gucci handbag and you don't, so you get it, you know. Yeah, I'm out of shade. You can't have any. Sorry, all out. Came too late. <laughs> oh, sorry, you were late. You were late. That's she not gonna happen. No. There's no yeah. light with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. At least, you know, maybe, like yeah. I hope I'm not being presumptuous saying that, but yeah. May yeah. Allah forgive me. Yeah, for yeah, not, for no, this, this is a love we're talking about. There's going to be plenty of shade. There is going to be plenty of shade. Alhamdulillah. There's shade for everybody. I think so. I want to encourage everyone to get in the shade with you. you yes. Yes, you. we want to bring people into the shade with us. This is true. <laughs> So we want people to join us. We want our companions to be the best companions because that will make us better Muslims. That's why yeah. I recommend books. When you ask which books, yeah, I said the Muslima because well, the other beautiful thing about those books that you asked me to recommend is they tell they teach you how to be the best version of yourself. Yes, and that's one thing that I think is so important, dear listener, is to be your most authentic self, the person that God made you to be, because it's beautiful. And, and again, if you join Quran Revolution, which I know Ina has talked about. Yes. I, you know, and if, if I could do a whole nother podcast with Gina about Quran Revolution. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm for it if she ever wants to. Cause All right. 
I entered the Quran <laughs> revolution like crying because I couldn't read Quran. And now every day I cry because I can read Quran. Oh, mm -hmm. It has changed. I've only been in the program now for 11 weeks. One mm -hmm. during Ramadan. And then I think we're in week 10 now. I think we are in week, we are in week 10. We are in week 10, yeah. And my whole life has changed just in those 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. And, and I've been Muslim 17 years. And this has been, other than when I found my halakha, when I found my sisters, my sure. other convert sisters, and the change that I felt finally finding other Muslims that I could like, relate to, mm -hmm. build that sisterhood bond. Mm -hmm. And that was such a blessing because that's the other thing. Find your find your other Muslims. Yes, yes. Find your find your sisters. Find the other part of the Ummah. Other, <laughs> yeah, find your brothers, find your sisters. Mm -hmm. you but at not only that, like that was a changing moment in my Imam, but now also this Quran revolution has changed who I am as well. Alhamdulillah. It really is amazing. Amazing. I mean, he's, we're learning so much more than just Tajweed. There's so much more to learn and to have that good supportive community. And you can find it in many different places, but we have found it in Quran Revolution. So, yes. Alhamdulillah. So, well, it's not even that. It's just bringing the Quran into your life. Like, yes, yes. The program allows you to bring the Quran into your life every single day. Yes, this is like, true. Like I said, like we said earlier, you know, when I said Mustaqeen, I used to think it was. Felicity. <laughs> like okay, program, you didn't know better. <laughs> I didn't know better, but now like this program, like part of this program is teaching you what the words are. Yes, learning what they mean is so it's it's been amazing. Because you're reading the Quran every day and you're reading it with the translation. And anyone yeah. can do that, you know, recite Quran.com. And it helps you understand the words because you've got the meaning right there. And so then you're yeah. able to understand what you're reading more because a lot of the words are repeated. And if you read it enough, you have enough exposure. You're going to pick up those words exactly. just from sheer exposure to it. You know, Aladina Amanu, which is, um, you know, those who believe those something who like that. Or, yeah. Because like, you say it so many times when you're reading it. So, you know, exactly. Or like, there. like the big thing, like I'm in level two. Uh, mm -hmm. which is the level below Gina here. But like, we're really focusing on the word cool, which is say, and these yes. are like things that you're really supposed to like focus on. Like when Allah tells you to say something, you need to focus on these things. These are the lessons that I'm learning in my section right now. Yes. And like I already knew what cool mm -hmm. meant before mm -hmm. like we started this, this section mm -hmm. of lessons, but just to have that perspective and really feel it. Cause then when you bring it into your prayer, like it just brings that much more into your worship. Alhamdulillah. Yes, yes, it does. It really does. So it's actually been about an hour, believe it or not. Oh, I know, I know. So so thank you, dear listeners. I hope that this was all beneficial for everyone. Is there anything that you would like? What is the one thing you would recommend to someone who is considering converting to Islam? Listen to Mufti Men. A lot. Mm -hmm. Mufti Mank, he's great. Yeah, uh, listen to Mufti Mank because it's, uh, and and brother Wassam Sharif mm -hmm. and Brother Solomon. Like, because I know at the beginning a lot of things are are, are intimidating. So listen mm -hmm. to brother. Like, if you turn on a YouTube, actually, it's not even just Mufti Mank or Omar Solomon or even Wassam Sharif or or any of the Al Magar teachers. It's just if you turn if if you turn on something about Islam and it makes you feel empty, then switch to another video. Yes, because yes. Because it shouldn't make you feel empty. It should make you feel fulfilled. Very much so. Very much so. And Umar Suleiman and Mustafa Sam Sharif and Mufti Mank, they they really have a unique way. Of, and I love, um, was it Hamza Yusuf? Hamza Yusuf. I really like Sheikh Hamza Yusuf as well. Hamza Yusuf. Um, uh... Oh, Yusuf Estes, you were just on his show. Uh, uh, yes, know. yes, I was. First, first accepting Islam, uh, especially when you're first accepting Islam. It's really great when you're first accepting. So find, find the shakes that are really uplifting. Like, yes. Uh, Yusha Evans. Oh, wonderful. Another wonderful speaker. Um, definitely, if you listen to this podcast, listen to the other stories. They're, they're really, really 
inspiring. Like I've been Muslim 17 years and I was just like really moved by a lot of the stories. They were just so beautiful, mashallah. Mm -hmm. And again, build your Islamic library, uh, read stories, read books about people who have become Muslim and turn to people like Sister Gina, who recently became Muslim, but also find other people who've been Muslim for several years. Like, sure, sure. Masjid, like myself, who's been Muslim for 17 years. My auntie, who had led my halakha, she's been Muslim for 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know, find people with different experiences mm -hmm. who have a journey the road and can tell you about what it means. Yes, yes. Alhamdulillah. Journey the road. And yeah. also focus. Focus on Allah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Focus on Allah. Like focus on Allah and the in the teachings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because everything we have in this religion is a way of life. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not just converting to something you're going to do on Sunday. Yes, morning. yes. It's not. It's not like yes, exactly. It's something you do every single day. Alhamdulillah. Every day, every single moment. It's not just the five times a day salah. I mean, mm -hmm. it is. It is your way of life. It will become the way you live your life. But the benefit you get from it. Mm -hmm. is Alhamdulillah. The world. It's mm -hmm. the relationships I have with people. All my relationships are so much better since I became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So may, may Allah bless us all, including our dear listeners, with beneficial knowledge and with guidance. Yeah. I mean, that's, and that's why I always say, if you find something on Islam that is is bringing you bringing you distress, then it's probably not really Islam. Sure, it's, sure. True Islam doesn't fill you with distress; it feel it fills you. It fills you with. It just fills your soul. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, exactly. It's like an empty tank that you fill with something yeah. that that leaves you. I don't know. Complete. In a way. Alhamdulillah. So dear listeners, if you have any questions and you want to listen to more podcasts, feel free to go to our website, untoislam.com. It'll be in the links below. So thank you so much for joining us, Sister Khadija. for having me. Alhamdulillah. I could just go on for another hour. <laughs> but thank you again. Like seeing your smiling face from Quran Revolution to this moment, uh, from uh, Quran 360 during Ramadan to this moment, I'm so honored. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I really enjoyed Quran 360. Uh, um, yeah, I, or Ramadan 360. Yeah, really did. So. Yeah. So we should come from there to like sitting here and getting to talk to you for the last. Like been an hour, over an hour now. So Alhamdulillah. <laughs> It's been it's such an honor. Thank well, thank you so much. So, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.